Hello there people, I should say good morning, Saturday morning, this is Christian, this is Fusion for 60 and this is the Strange Cube. My latest challenge with withdrawing looks like this, that was apparently, I said level 5, this is too easy, you're solving things too fast. Um, anyway, it's a cube uh, with edges here, I'm not showing any hidden edges here, but obviously this line here, you look here, this line here is the same line as this, so there's edge going from the center of each of the faces of the cube to the next one. A couple of different ways to do this, I'm going to show the way I do it. And I'm going to show you another way that to do it, because if I do this and turn off the component colors, you can see how color the things did nicely, and let's turn it around. You can see this is also the combination of two tetrahedrons on top of each other. I've forgotten what the correct name is of this. Uh, a small thing of the geometry, of course, is that the uh, the dimension we're using I was uh, 50 millimeter here. That is from vertex to vertex in this direction, but if we look at the here, so from here to here, that is the, we turn it around, we can see it better, you can see the cube shape here, this is the diagonal of the cube, so these are orientated, orientated like that. I think some of you also notice that you can make the cube and then make, you can sketch this triangle on a plane and loft from that triangle up to here in some other ways. But I will also make a design where I design it in this direction. That is the least amount of steps I have found to make it in. If you just want to do things in little steps. Uh, this is the eight step solution. The one I'm going to make, I'm going to skip some of these. There are some other ways to do this, but let's get started. We're going to do a new design. We're going to create a sketch. We're going to create from the top. Now I already know I need to make uh, a mid plane between my uh, little cube because I need to sketch on the mid plane to cut out. I'm going to switch over to this to cut out this. Let's change the color. I'm going to, do, I'm going to make a cube. I'm going to cut out this cutout here and then pattern it around everything. That's the idea I have. Hopefully it works. Uh, anyway. So the problem is if you look, let's go to the home view. Uh, if you look at the cube like this, you can see we can see the cut out this little triangle shape here from the diagonal of the cube. So I have two choices. I can sketch the cube like this and then create a mid plane, or I can slightly rotate. Sorry, I'm going to rotate the model, sketch it like this, and I can use one of the planes for the, the, the mid plane. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to sketch it like this. Just trying to explain the strange geometry I'm doing. Circumscribe polygon, because I'm lazy. Yes, we could use a uh, normal rectangle and use constraints, but what I like about this is I get everything done immediately. We start with the dimension, of course. We can do that here. Uh, flip around, so I'm going to right click and select aligned. First, I'm going to call, I call it the dimension side. I'm going to name it because I would use it in the extrude command. Makes it easier to make things parametric. 50 millimeters, that's for my drawing. I'm going to make a line. We're going to show you an interesting thing that sometimes happens. I'm going to make it like this. This is the hidden edge. Uh, let's go back to the earlier model. The line I did there, let's go back. The little uh, construction line is the edge I have here, while the square is the outer dimension of the cube. Now, we want this to be horizontal. This is a bit interesting sometimes. Let's have a look at the sketch. We, the only thing we can do now, we can't move things around, but we can rotate them. So I'm going to add a horizontal constraint to this here. And for some strange reason, the design doesn't get totally defined. It doesn't show up like a fully defined. I think this is confusing fusion a bit because the horizontal constraint is here on a line that are on midpoints of this square and fusion goes like what is supposed to happen here. Well, so if you end up something like this and you notice, oh, I can't get fully defined. There are two ways to do this. In this case, I can simply do a line, construction line from a fully defined point or reading point in the middle and up to something that's not fully defined, uh, other midpoint here, that's a fully defined part of the, the square, or simply the corner up here. By doing that, Fusion Sketch Ending can solve and see this is a fully defined sketch. Another way of doing it, if you do it in another order, I remove this horizontal, and I apply the horizontal and vertical constraint directly to the, the square. If I do that, I need to remove this, otherwise the, the sketch will be over-constrained. That's the interesting part. 
doing like this also creates a fully defined sketch so if you sometimes end up with sketches that doesn't turn fully defined have a look at constraints if they are like linked from one through each other basically the horizontal constraint here was constrained in the square through the midpoint constraints and so forth these here are directly constraining the square sorry i'm not i'm not simply hobby user remember that we're gonna finish sketch e on the keyboard and uh, we're going to do a symmetric extrude we're going to have a whole length of course because that's my dimension i'm going to use my side from sketch one and by doing that we have a cube a nice little cube now we're going to create a sketch on the plane here so we can't see the plane so let's hold down the mouse button find y set plane s on the keyboard let's find intersect we're going to insect the intersect the body selection filter body this body P on the keyboard for project. I'm going to project in this little line here and open up and hide the body and hide our first sketch. Uh, the only line I'll be using is this one here. So I have a couple of choices, but I'm simply going to turn these into construction lines. I like to have them left over to be visible and see what we're doing. Line from here to here to here. And we have a fully defined sketch. E on this keyboard, it understands there's only one profile to have the body. Select symmetric, we don't need any dimension, we simply tell fusion to extrude all. And it's gonna cut away from everything and we hit OK. Gonna hide, I've turned off in my preferences, I've turned off auto hide the sketches, that's why I need to go back here and hide sketches the whole time. Now I need to do some patterns here and I missed one thing. The first thing, of course, is going to pattern these around the four edges here. Another thing is I need to pattern it around. And to do that, I need the diagonal of the cube. So let's open up this sketch here again. Let's hide the body. If I do a line from here to here, I'm going to finish sketch. I need it from the diagonal of the diagonal. Uh, turn on our sketch and turn on our cube. You can see I have made a line that goes from opposite corners. That's the diagonal through the cube. So here's some keyboard. Uh, circular pattern. I'm going to do it off features. And the feature, of course, this extrude feature. The number one I'm going to do, I'm going to find this axis here. That's the Z axis, the blue. I'm going to tell Fusion I need to do it four times. So we can use adjust. You can just optimize other things. You sometimes need to, sorry, tell what over this uh, compute option. You sometimes need to change that to get things to work. And by that, we had done like one rotation. We need to do it around the other axis. So S, circular pattern. Once again, features are extrude, our earlier circular pattern. And the axis is going to be a little diagonal we drew. And now, if you should not make it too many, because we only need to do it three times. And by doing that, hit OK we have our little beautiful strange cube we're going to right click and check properties and it should be 62,500 cubic millimeters so that's one way of doing it yes we can put these two together in a 3d sketch i know people are saying you know, oh use 3d sketching 3d sketching is not the answer in most places use this as much as you want but be careful uh, with that said can we make it uh, by designing like we had here shift and to switch colors can we create the tetrahedras instead and still get the dimension so now we're going to get into some strange math we're going to start a new design the design intent is here to create this tetrahedron and then of course circular pattern and combine together so we need to set up some parameters change par oops no 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 not material sorry change parameters we're going to set up our first and uh, that is going to be our cube side and that was 50 millimeters no problem let's go back and look at this here that's number one the second i mean defined as i said earlier these two points here this is the diagonal of the cube and for you who has forgotten the math in school you're going to do a cube diagonal that is the side of course multiplied by the square root of three that gives us the diagonal of the cube so now we have a diagonal let's go back and look at our model uh, 
this plane here, this tetrahedron, is splitting this uh, halfway up of a hive of the tetrahedron. That means we have a half of a hive here, we have half of a hive here, and half of a hive here. Or basically, the hive of a tetrahedron here is two thirds of the diagonal. Let's do that. Change parameters, add parameters. Uh, tetrahedron hive. Sorry if I'm spelling something wrong here now. Uh, so that's going to be two thirds of the cube diagonal. So we could pick up our cube diagonal till multiply by two, divide by three. That's the tetrahedron hive. We have most parts here. Um, but for convenience, I'm going to need to do a circular pattern. And I need to do the circular pattern around an axis. And I guess I could create a sketch, but okay. You know, when we fancy and like to do things is as little step as possible. I need this. Oops, sorry. Turn the wrong way. Let's do it like this instead. Uh, I need this face here that we're going to extrude on with some angles. I need that to be slightly below the region plane. I want the region plane to go through this. So basically, yeah, I create everything centered around the region. That needs this plane here should be some distance down this uh, multiply of the diagonal. And if we have a look, we can start thinking. We have one third, one third, one third, as we talked earlier. And this is a middle. This means this needs to be one sixth of the diagonal left below our region plane. So let's add that parameter, modify. Sorry if I'm confusing you, that's the whole idea. Uh, offset. Profile, the profile. As we said, that needs to be the di cube diagonal, and one six. We simply divide it by six, like that, and we have all the parameters we need. Let's start sketching. We're gonna sketch from the top. We're gonna use a polygon, of course, because I am lazy and don't want to draw triangles. Let's make it horizontal, like this. You see, I applied this first to get a good thing here. Now I need to somehow get the hive of a tetrahedron in here. So we're going to do some lines, L again, construction lines. This here would, would normally be like the hive of the tetrahedron. If I tell fusion, these two lines here need to be equal. You see, things get locked down. This here is the hive of a tetrahedron. So we're going to dimension it like that. This is basic geometry. If you can't follow, I'm sorry. I might explain this some other. I have a tetrahedron video where I do, do use geometry fully. In this case, I'm going to use math. This is going to be the tetrahedron hive, like that. And open up a sketch. And we have a fully defined sketch. We can't move things around. So, this is our profile. We're going to finish. Now, we're going to do an extrude of this profile, but. We can't do it from a region plane, it just needs to be a bit below, so we're going to do an offset. And that is going to be minus our offset distance, offset profile parameter. The distance, yes, we can use, we only know the tetrahedron and hive. And of course, this is not the tetrahedron because it needs to be uh, into one point, and we can use the taper angle for that. So that's going to be miss us also math. You need to look it up. Minus a sine of one third. That's the angle of the tetrahedron. So minus a sine one third. And by doing that, I have a tetrahedron. And now we need to make one more. Yes, circular pattern of bodies. This body around axis. We can lose our own height axis here. I'm going to do two of those. Mark everything and tell fusion I want to combine because I'm uh, sorry, I'm gonna open up. I now have two bodies, so I'm marking them all of them to combine, join. Yes, no keeping tools. And this is the same shape done in four steps. And of course, if you right click our body and check our properties, 62,500 points here, see here with all the math we have done. So I'm nowhere directly put in the dimension I'm looking for. We can check it. The inspect from this point to this point here is 50 point. Da, 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 da. If we add uh, all decimals, you can see there else a small problem in the last here, but that's basically nothing that's going to affect the model you're creating. So with that said, there's uh, two ways of making the strange cube, or you want to call it intersecting tetrahedrons. And well, it's that way. Let's get outside and enjoy the spring weather. Have a good time. 
See you around. I hope to see you around. Goodbye. Take care.